This is the audio lecture for Chapter 24, Family Context in Nursing. Family continues to be a central institution in American society. In this chapter, we will be looking at the family from many points of view. The family. Family structure and function influence the lives of its individual members. The concept structure and functioning of the family unit changes over time. Nurses must remember that families face many challenges, including the impact of health and illness, childbearing and child rearing, and changes in family structure and dynamics, as well as the challenge of caring for an older adult. Nurses need to be aware of family configuration, structure, function, and coping capacity so we can identify family strengths and weaknesses to provide competent care. What is a family? Think of a family as a set of relationships that a patient identifies as family or as a network of individuals who influence one another's lives, whether they are actual biological or legal ties. Defining family is not as simple as one might imagine. Think about how the definition of family impacts health insurance policies, access to children's school records, filing tax returns, and eligibility for sick leave benefits or public assistance programs. A family is a set of interacting individuals related by blood, marriage, or adoption who usually live together and fulfill functions of socialization, division of labor, and economic provisions and cooperatively meet affective and emotional needs of the individuals within the family unit. For some patients, family includes only persons related by marriage, birth, or adoption. However, many family forms are known, both traditional and non-traditional. When caring for families, we know that nurses need to look at both traditional and non-traditional family units. Let's consider this case study. Patrick and Michelle O'Connell have been married for 10 years. Patrick is 38 years old and works at the Department of Public Safety. Recently, he learned that he is in danger of being laid off in the next round of cuts. Patrick has borderline hypertension and admits his stress level is an eight on a scale of zero to 10. He enjoys watching TV, and playing computer games. The family has health insurance through Patrick's job. Okay class, what do you imagine will be the impending health issues in this family based on the initial information given in the case study? The main concern will be loss of health benefits if Patrick loses his job, especially since he has borderline hypertension and a high stress level. Patrick's stress level alone can impede his health, and if he loses his health benefits, his health care needs may go unattended. Current trends and new family forms. Family forms are patterns of people who are identified by family members. Keep an open mind about what makes up a family so you do not overlook potential resources and concerns. The nuclear family consists of husband and wife and perhaps one or more children. The extended family includes relatives such as aunts, uncles, grandparents, or cousins, in addition to the nuclear family. The single parent family is formed when one parent leaves the nuclear family because of death, divorce, or desertion, or when a single person decides to have or adopt a child. The blended family is formed when parents bring unrelated children from prior or foster parenting relationships into a new joint living situation. Alternative family relationships include multi-adult households, skip generation families such as grandparents caring for grandchildren, communal groups with children, non-families which are adults living alone, and cohabitating partners. The information is from box 24-1 in the textbook Family Forms. 
Here are various family trends and family forms in the United States. The number of people living alone is expanding and accounts for approximately 26% of households. Divorce rates have tripled since the 1950s, and although the rate appears to have stabilized, it is estimated that 54% of all marriages will end in divorce. The number of single parent families appears to be stabilizing at about 26% of all families with children. Although mothers head 83% of single parent families, father only families are on the rise. 41% of children are living with mothers who have never married. Many of these children result from an adolescent pregnancy. The majority of adolescent mothers continue to live with their families. A teenage pregnancy tends to have long-term consequences for the mother and often severely stresses family relationships and resources. In addition, there is an increased risk for continued poverty for the family. Although unable to marry by law in all states, homosexual couples define their relationship in family terms. Approximately half of all gay male couples live together, compared with three-fourths of lesbian couples. Okay, let's continue with the case study. Patrick's wife, Michelle, is 32 years old. She is employed part-time as a receptionist at a building supply company and attends nursing school. Michelle and Patrick do not have any children. Michelle is the oldest daughter in her family and is the only one of the siblings to maintain routine contact with her 80-year-old grandmother, Lois. Michelle's parents are both deceased. Michelle is very worried about their financial problems and the health problems of her grandmother. Here we have a little more of the family picture. So class, whom do you think will be most likely to have increased health care concerns based on the information so far? Would you say this is a traditional or non-traditional family? All three of the people portrayed, Patrick, Michelle, and Lois, are at high risk for developing health problems. Patrick's risk stems from his current history and high stress level. Michelle's risk stems from possible fatigue from caring for both Patrick and Lois while working part-time and shouldering the, man the demands of nursing school. Lois is at high risk for health problems due to her age. Okay, now we're going to find a little bit more information about the family. Michelle has two sisters. One lives four hours away by car and the other lives six hours away. Her grandmother, Lois, has become more forgetful and less tolerant of physical activity because of severe heart disease. Michelle worries about what she will do about this because Lois lives two hours away. Lois needs support and it's probable that this need for support will increase over time. So class, as this case study develops, whom do you see as being the primary caretaker for Lois? Most likely, Michelle will become the primary caretaker of Lois because she lives the closest to Lois and is also studying to be a nurse. Factors influence in family forms. Social scientists identify six additional trends as threats or concerns facing the family. One, changing economic status, for example, decline in family income, need for dual incomes, decreased health insurance, or lack of access to health care. Two, homelessness. Three, domestic violence. Four, the presence of acute or chronic illness. Five, trauma. Or six, end-of-life care. Economics have particularly affected families at the lower end of the income scale, and single-parent families are especially vulnerable. As a result, many families have inadequate or no health insurance, and they have difficulty accessing health care. The fastest-growing segment of the homeless population is families with children. 
This, is, this includes complete nuclear families and single parent families. Children of homeless families are often in fair or poor health. Usually the only access to health care for these children is through the emergency department. Homeless adults have poor nutrition and limited access to health care. The cause of family violence is complex and multidimensional. Stress, poverty, social isolation, psychopathology, and learned family behavior are all factors associated with violence. Any acute or chronic illness influences the family economically, socially, and functionally and affects the family's decision making and coping resources. Trauma is a sudden unplanned event. Family members need to cope with the challenges of a severe life-threatening event which can include the stressors associated with an intensive care environment, anxiety and depression, and economic burden, not to mention the impact on a family's functioning and decision making. At times, a family member becomes terminally ill. Even if family members are prepared for their loved one's death, their need for information, support, assurance, and presence are great. Attributes of families. Structure is based on organization. Relationships are numerous and complex. Function is what the family does. It involves the processes used by the family to achieve goals. Processes include goal setting, conflict resolution, caregiving, nurturing, and use of resources. Families also experience developmental stages. So each family is unique in its structure and function. For example, the structure for a woman can include wife, mother, daughter, or employee, student, boss. Structure can add challenges and rewards. Family goals are met when good communication takes place. Families, like individuals, change and grow over time. Although families are far from identical to one another, they have a basic pattern and similarity and need to be completed before, excuse me, pattern and similarity in experiences resulting in predictable stages. Each of these developmental stages has its own challenges, needs, and resources and includes tasks that need to be completed before the family is able to successfully move on to the next stage. Table 24-1 in the textbook provides the stages of the family life cycle. Okay, let's take another look at our case study. As her grandmother's health declines, Michelle feels that her grandmother should move in with her and Patrick. However, they would need to give up their pet dog because Lois has allergies and their home would require some renovations. Bethany, age 28, is the nursing student assigned to care for Lois in her community health rotation. She sees Lois living alone in a clean mobile home in a nice park. Although Lois receives Social Security and has Medicare, she cannot afford supplemental insurance. So here's a question. What are the changes that Michelle sees for herself and Patrick if Lois moves in with them? So if Lois moves in with Michelle and Patrick, then the couple will have to give up their pet as well as make renovations to their home that costs money at a time when Patrick's job is not secure. Here's another question. What other changes and adaptations do you anticipate they would face? So Michelle and Patrick's roles would change if Lois moved in because they would both be responsible for taking care of Lois. Michelle and Patrick would most likely have less time for each other and would need to stay in on evenings and weekends to care for Lois. family and health. Multiple factors influence the health of a family. For example, is social resources, 
economic resources, geographical location, and genetic factors. Family is the primary social context in which health promotion and disease prevention takes place. Some families do not place a high value on good health. Genetic factors reflect the family's heredity or genetic susceptibility to a disease that may or may not result in actual development of the disease. Hardiness and resiliency are factors that moderate a family's stress. Family hardiness is the internal strengths and durability of the family unit. Resiliency helps to evaluate healthy responses when individuals and families are experiencing stressful events. Okay, let's look at our case study once again. Bethany assesses Lois's healthcare demands and basic physiologic needs. She analyzes the role strain on Michelle. She also is aware of the impact of stress on Patrick's hypertension. She understands that Lois wants to stay in her home and Michelle wants Lois to do what will make her happiest. Bethany asks about any extended family members, and Michelle explains that she has two sisters who are willing to come and help care for Lois. Michelle's sisters plan on alternating visits every month to assist Patrick and Michelle. Let's consider how Bethany is approaching her assessment of this family's need. What information has Bethany gained so far about this family? First of all, Bethany understands Lois health care demands and basic physiologic needs. Bethany also understands the stress Patrick and Michelle are both under due to current occurrences in their lives. Bethany understands Michelle's family dynamic and plan to care for Lois. Here's another question. What other information might Bethany need to assist this family? Bethany needs to contact social services to see if Lois qualifies for any type of senior care or additional care services in addition to Medicare. Bethany also needs to ascertain if Michelle's two sisters are willing to have Lois move in with them or closer to them. Finally, Bethany needs to see if the family is willing to consider an assisted living facility for Lois. Continuing with the case study. Bethany knows that families have their unique perspectives and characteristics. Families have differences in values, beliefs, and philosophies. As Bethany studies and reviews the literature, she learns that nurses need to have cultural competence and sensitivity when dealing with culturally diverse patients. The cultural heritage of the family often affects religious, childbearing, and nutritional practices. Cultural heritage even affects the family's recreational activities. It is important to incorporate cultural preferences into the plan for a patient's care. It increases the patient's adherence to therapy, assists in the transition from hospital to home, and provides a unique aspect to the patient's care. Here's a question. In what ways might cultural perspectives affect how Bethany proceeds with her assessment of this family? Cultural perspectives may greatly affect this family because they may not be willing to have Lois live in an assisted living facility. The family may be willing to put themselves under grave stress just to keep Lois in one of their homes. Bethany needs to find out what the family's feeling is regarding Lois living somewhere other than with the family. Nursing Knowledge Base there are different approaches for family nursing practice. For this chapter, it has three levels of approaches. The first being family as context, second family as patient, and third family as a system. When you view the family as context, your primary focus is on the health 
and development of an individual member existing within a specific environment. Although you focus the nursing process on the individual's health status, you also assess the extent to which the family provides the individual's basic needs. When you view the family as patients, the family processes and relationships are your primary focus of care. Focus your nursing assessment on the family patterns versus individual member characteristics. Family as a system is a newer model and includes both relational and transactional concepts. When you care for the family as a system, you're caring for each family member and the family unit using all community, social, and psychosocial resources. Quiz time. Here's the question. A patient comes from a close-knit family. The patient's family functions as context. You will need to evaluate A, attainment of patient needs, B, family attainment of developmental tasks. C, individual family members caring about one another. Or D, family satisfaction with this new level of functioning. The answer is A, attainment of the patient's needs. Critical thinking. You are going to hear this term all throughout your nursing school career. Critical thinking is crucial in the care of patients and their families. As a nurse, you synthesize all aspects of critical thinking to give individualized, compassionate family care. The care of a family is an ongoing, mutually acceptable relationship. As you begin to provide family-centered care, you continually assess, analyze, and reflect on the changing needs and healthcare goals of your patients and their families. Scientific and family nursing knowledge, experience, critical thinking attitudes, and standards enable you to identify the needs of both patients and their families. Synthesis of these elements enables you to assess the family as context, as patient, or as a system, and to gain information about the family life cycle perspective, family structure and functioning, and family health. Box 24-2 in the textbook provides an example of synthesis in practice. Family care also draws on knowledge from growth and development, psychology, communication, family theories, sociology, stress and coping, and the family life cycle. Experiences in your own family help you design family-centered care. Apply critical thinking attitudes such as creativity, perseverance, and risk-taking. Partner with a patient and family to use the strengths from a patient's family structure and function, beliefs, values, and expectations to develop a comprehensive, multidisciplinary plan of care. As a nurse, you are going to apply nursing standards, example critical care, obstetrical, or gerontological, that pertain to the family. The nursing process assessment. The nursing process is the same whether the focus is family as patient, context, or system. Family assessment is a priority for providing adequate family care and support. Areas included in family assessment are the form, structure, and function of the family, its developmental stage, and its progress toward or accomplishment of developmental tasks. 
we begin assessment by considering the views of a patient toward the family. Table 24-2 in the textbook provides an example of focused patient assessment. The family structure provides information about composition of the family, example whether it's a nuclear or extended family. To assess family structure, it is helpful to determine the following. Who is the head of the household? Who is the wage earner? How are decisions made? and who maintains the household. To assess family functioning, ask questions to determine the power structure and patterning of roles and tasks. Knowing about a family's culture and the meaning of that culture to a family structure and functioning, health practices, and family celebrations helps you design family-centered care. To determine the influence of culture on a family, you ask a patient about his or her cultural background. Box 24-3 in the textbook provides an example of family-centered care. When you establish a relationship with a family, it is important to identify potential and external resources. Together with your patient and his or her family, develop a plan of care that all members clearly understand and on which they mutually agree. You base a positive collaborative relationship on mutual respect and trust. When assessing a community, determine the presence of healthcare resources, proximity of emergency services, and municipal services. Families, like individual patients, have certain expectations for care. Some families expect it to be consulted as a whole unit when discussing care of their loved ones. Others wish to have a designated decision maker. Determining expectations early in the assessment helps to avoid problems resulting from misunderstandings in the future. Nursing process diagnosis, the second step of the nursing process. Nursing assessment results in clustering relevant data and seeing patterns that support nursing diagnoses. These nursing diagnoses selected often include a family's health needs, current and potential health problems, level of wellness, or a combination of these areas. Examples of nursing diagnoses for family-focused care are shown on the slide. A nursing diagnosis often focuses on changes in the family processes or roles of members. Through in times of acute illness, a family becomes extremely distressed and focuses solely on the ill member, neglecting the needs of the other family members. For example, consider the diagnosis of risk for caregiver role strain, a possibility when extended care of a family member is necessary. The diagnostic statement indicates related factors contributing to the health problem. Okay, back to our case study. Recently, Lois's health status declined further and she needed more supervision with her medication administration and with her activities. As a result, she needed to move in with Michelle and Patrick. Michelle's two sisters alternate monthly visits to give Michelle and Patrick a three-day weekend free each month. Bethany visits with Lois periodically to assess how the family's short-term goals are coming along for caregiving and maintaining their own family life. She checks to see how Lois's goals are being fulfilled regarding her care in her granddaughter's home. Bethany assesses Lois's activity tolerance and her forgetfulness. Bethany also assesses Michelle and Patrick's stress levels with meeting the needs of school, home, and Lois's health care. To assess Michelle and Patrick, she requests that the family have a meeting once a month. 
The ongoing assessment requires a multidisciplinary effort from the home care nurse who knows the family best, the family members themselves, the physician, the chaplain, the social worker, and the nutritionist. The nurse is the true coordinator and evaluator of the care provided, and Bethany knows this. Now that Lois has moved in with them, Michelle and Patrick find that they have little free time to spend with each other. Because of the added responsibilities of caregiving, they are fatigued and are not eating as healthy as they should and are arguing more. They both worry about Lois and Patrick's blood pressure is higher. Bethany offers caregiver support by listening to their individual concerns. Bethany discusses with Michelle and Patrick the effects of caregiver strain on each of them individually and on their relationship. Bethany sees that they are suffering from caregiver role strain related to Lois's increased health care needs. Okay class, if you were Bethany, what actions would you take to help this family? Bethany should suggest that Michelle and Patrick take time for themselves the one week in a month that Michelle's sisters come to care for Lois. Additionally, if they can't afford it, Michelle and Patrick could retain the services of an elder sitter once every week or two so they could go out for a dinner or movie in order to enjoy each other. Additionally, if Patrick's health care policy covers the service, Patrick and Michelle could go to couples therapy to have an objective third party offer suggestions on how to improve their relationship. If this is not an option, Patrick and Michelle could work together to develop a system for improving their health, getting more rest, and resolving issues. Nursing process the planning phase. After you develop nursing diagnosis, the next step is to plan care with the family. Goal setting is mutual. The goals need to be concrete, realistic, compatible with the family's developmental stage and expectations, and acceptable to the family. An example of a goal is the family will gain improved understanding of family caregiving with the expected outcome being communication clearly describes the role and expectation for each caregiver. Figure 24-2 in the textbook provides an example of a concept map for caregiver role strain. Also, review the care plan in the textbook for an example of a care plan for caregiver role strain. Setting priorities focuses on a patient a patient family unit, or a family alone. It is imperative that the family and patient clearly understand and agree on the plan of care and priorities. The priorities for a patient and family are sometimes different. Collaboration with all appropriate family members when planning care is essential. Base your collaborative relationship on mutual respect and trust. By offering alternative actions and asking family members for their own ideas and suggestions, you help to reduce the family's feelings of powerlessness. Collaborating with other disciplines such as physical therapy and social services increases the likelihood of a comprehensive approach to the family's health care needs and it ensures better continuity of care. Here's another quick quiz. When a nurse completes the nursing data on a client, to complete the admission and develop a plan of care, the nurse will need to A, test the family's unit ability to cope, B, evaluate communication patterns, C, identify family unit form and attitudes, or D, gather health data from all family members. The answer is C, identify family unit form and attitudes. Okay, back to the case study. 
Bethany works with Michelle and Patrick to determine some goals to improve the quality of their lives as caregivers. Bethany teaches Michelle and Patrick some techniques to relieve their stress, including relaxation exercises and meditation. She also provides a list of support services, including local clergy, volunteer services, and community support services. Caring and support through listening and accepting the needs and expectations of members of the family will enhance the coping. What do you think are some of the goals that Bethany could establish with Michelle and Patrick? Some of the goals that Bethany can establish with Michelle and Patrick are identify and share four caregiving activities within one week, demonstrate correct meditation techniques within one month, meditate together four nights per week, or contact the local council on aging within three weeks. The nursing process, the implementation phase. Delegation in the management of nursing care activities is a challenge in family nursing. Incorporating day-to-day -day learning outcomes for family caregivers better prepares them for their role and often reduces the stress following the transition home. Using family caregivers is an important resource and challenge for family nursing. Family caregivers need to learn aspects of physical and emotional care for the patient. For example, many family caregivers are now faced with having to perform complex nursing procedures at home such as wound care, enteral nutrition, and intravenous therapy. However, they have physical and emotional health care needs as well. Teach them how to meet their needs. Nursing interventions aim to increase family members' abilities in certain areas, remove barriers to health care, and do things that the family is not able to do for itself. For example, as a health educator, you provide accurate health information about diagnoses and prognoses that helps the family caregiver understand and anticipate needs and concerns of a care recipient. Work within the family structure when providing care and do not attempt to change the structure. When implementing family nursing, design health promotion interventions such as low fat, low carb meals, or family exercise program to improve or maintain the physical, social, emotional, and spiritual well-being of the family unit and its members. You often link health promotion behaviors to the developmental stage of the family. For example, a childbearing family needs effective prenatal care, and a childbearing family needs encouragement to follow immunization schedules. Implementation continued. Acute care settings discharge patients very quickly, and the complexities of today's acute health care settings require you to be astute in assessing, understanding, and supporting family and patient needs. An open relationship between you as a nurse and a patient and family leads to an accurate assessment of what is needed at time of discharge including resources in the community and the patient's home. In an acute care setting, clear communication is essential. Help the family identify methods to maintain open lines of communication with you and the healthcare team. This allows you to anticipate your patients and family members' needs and provide optimal care. Likewise, it is important that the healthcare team uses communication techniques that are supportive and clear to understand and advocate for a family's expectation. Clear communication from the healthcare team helps to untangle medical terminology 
and enables the family to understand the healthcare issues, types of decisions, and healthcare outcomes. Family nursing emphasizes maintenance of a patient's functional abilities. This means working closely with the family to provide well-timed, individually targeted information, practical guidance, and instructions to help the family understand the specific care taking place in the home. Box 24-4 in your textbook provides an example of patient teaching for medication administration. When there are changes in a person's functional abilities, make sure that the home environment environment is adaptive to the patient's strengths and limitations. Referral to home care nursing is essential. Family caregiving is more than activities that include personal care, monitoring for complication or, or side effects of medications, and performing instrumental activities of daily living. It also includes ongoing emotional support, decision making, advocating for their loved one, and maintaining the integrity of the family unit. Caregivers in the sandwich generation find that they need to balance their own needs with those of their offspring and the needs of their aging parents. This balance often occurs at the expense of their well-being and resources. In addition, many of these caregivers report that support received from professional Health professionals is often lacking. Box 24-5 in your textbook discusses the sandwich generation. Box 24-6 provides information on caregiver concerns for older adults. And Box 24-7 provides evidence-based practice information related to end-of-life family caregiving. Let's return to our case study. One evening a week, another family member comes to care for Lois for a few hours so that Michelle and Patrick can have an evening out. A registered nurse spends one hour a week with Lois. A member of their church takes Lois to a senior enrichment program once per week, and a clergy member visits once per week. Lois sees the nurse practitioner every month and the physician every four months. Now we can see that changes and adaptations have been put in place to help Michelle and Patrick care for Lois. Who do you think was responsible for making these things happen? Of course, it was Bethany the nurse. She was responsible for instituting these changes that hopefully will improve Patrick, Lois, and Michelle's lives. Okay, back to the nursing process, the evaluation phase. When a patient's family functions as the context, the evaluation focuses on attainment of patient's needs. The evaluation is patient-centered, Although nursing measures have involved helping the patient adapt to the family environment, you compare the response of a patient with predetermined outcomes. When the family is the patient, the measure of family health is more than an evaluation of the health of all family members. You evaluate a family's change in functioning and its satisfaction with the new level of functioning. When you care for a family as a system, evaluation focuses on the effects that interventions have on the entire family, including the extended family. Evaluation is an ongoing process. Use critical thinking skills and clinical decision making to evaluate your patient's response to interventions. Box 24-8 in the textbook provides an example of evaluation. It is important to obtain a family's perspective of nursing care. 
how you planned and delivered the care with them, whether it was satisfactory, whether it met the family's goals, and if not, what do they think was lacking? Okay, let's wrap up this case study. With added help for Lois, Michelle has more time to devote to her studies. She plans to complete her education, get a better job, and help secure a sound financial future with Patrick. Michelle's sisters are great resources, and the family care plan for Lois is working well. However, the family is also in the process of investigating assisted living and nursing home facilities for Lois as her health declines. Okay, class, how do you think Bethany's assessment of this family affected this outcome? Bethany's assessment positively affected this outcome and improved the lives of all involved. Another question, how would you assess the family plan that was put in place for Lois. The family plan that was put in effect for Lois was effective in meeting not only Lois's needs, but also the needs of her caretakers, Patrick and Michelle. Okay, here's the last question. Do you think the family is responding realistically to Lois' health care needs? By considering assisted living and long-term care facilities, the family is realistically considering Lois' health care needs. Lois is going to need increased care around the clock, and facilities can provide this care, which will alleviate stress on the family. There's a cute little picture. It says, maybe my family and friends do mind if I practice shots and IVs on them. This concludes the audio lecture. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact Ms. Taylor or Ms. Scott. Thank you.